Hey guys, Dave from Voidsmith Innovation. Got a video for you guys today demonstrating what our brine uh, making system looks like here at our, at our shop in Lee Center um, where we manufacture the spray equipment. It is a, a very nice demonstration of a small scale replica of what you guys can do at your own properties. Um, you'll see that basically everything we do, we have our brine tanks tied together, we have our additive tanks, and really it is um, something that is very expandable even for us here. And uh, hopefully it can give you guys some idea of what you want your own setup to look like or what yours could look like. So the first thing, um, this is kind of a custom brine maker that we made. It actually is uh, almost a direct replica of what our 750 gallon brine makers look like now. Uh, this is a dual pump model, so it definitely speeds up the brine making process. Uh, we, do, we are equipped with a digital salinity meter on this brine maker for ourselves. We're looking into some optional equipment that we can outfit our customers with uh, to make the process a little bit simpler. But um, some of the things I want to touch on too is you'll notice, and we'll get some better shots of this too, but we have a manifold system here that we can control almost anything that we do with the system itself. You know, we are making brine, we are pumping to our storage tanks, we are drawing from our storage tanks, we are inducting our additives, we're filling the trucks, and we also have some emergency ports on here. If we were to lose power, we can still self-fill with the trucks, or when we accept tanker loads of additives, that's where they hook up. You're going to notice that everything here is tied to a, another manifold system where we fill our trucks. Um, we run an inline magnetic flow meter, some of the older technology that we have um, or that we used to run in the past. And we have some really cool stuff now. We have a metering system that automatically shuts itself off. So basically we tell how much of one product we want in the truck, it fills, shuts off, then we tell how much of the other, pro other product that we want. And then it tracks everything that we do. Um, just to help us get a little bit more precise and, and eliminate any kind of waste, especially when we're starting to drive the mix ratios right about at their tipping point of, of the additives and salt brine. One other cool thing is we also add air purge onto all of our systems, and we'll demonstrate that when we fill the truck. But basically what the air purge does, um, when you're done filling the truck, anything that's left in the hose or the connection points on the truck will have liquid in it, obviously. So when we run air, um, at about 20 PSI through the system, through the hoses, it'll flush all of that remaining liquid into the tank um, and then eliminate any waste at the connection points or any mess. And then the hose is a lot uh, easier to handle too when we, um, when we wrap it back up. We can also purge backwards into the system to get any additive out. You know, when we're paying over $2 a gallon for additive, we don't want to be incorporating it into other mixtures. Um, you know, over time that does add up to a tremendous amount of waste. So. Kind of cool, a, a good demonstration of what you guys can do with your setup. Here at this, uh, at our facility, we run um, brine maker salt and super sacks. We don't have a bunker or a skid loader to load. So we, we run the super sacks and we can load with the forklift quite a bit easier. The salt is actually much more fine and much more pure. So our, our salt brine um, is not as dirty and it, it does make brine a little bit faster. We'll show you the batch times here. Derek's gonna, gonna throw the first sack in the, in the brine maker. First thing I'll also talk to you about, the brine maker's been sitting for, oh, probably four or five weeks. Uh, we haven't had to make any brine. So you'll notice that actually our water line up top here is, uh, is here where usually it's, it's up here and that's due to evaporation. Um, you can see how dirty the top tank is and there's still about this much salt sitting in the brine maker and that's completely fine. Um, that salt will agitate back into solution, no problem, so we don't have to worry about wasting. So, we're going to always add our salt first. You'll notice that our water level is only about five inches off that bottom tank because, um, you know, we think about the process. When we add salt to the, to the uh, brine maker itself, that salt is going to displace some liquid. So we don't ever want to have our system completely full right away, otherwise we might have an overflow situation. But um, I think we're ready to go. We'll get this salt in here and we'll show you guys uh, some of the batch times on this system. <laughs> Okay, so you can see that the, uh, the super sacks are a little bit more labor intensive and that's one of the reasons we're actually running out of ceiling space here and I kind of forgot that we usually cut the bottom out, but the salt's in there. Um, we're sitting about oh, six inches out of the top of the, the water in the brine maker itself. Um, now we're gonna fill it with water. Some of you guys might be running off a bulk storage tank. Some of you might be running off a garden hose. Uh, 
Here we actually have a six inch water service to the building, so we have plenty of flow. Off of that six inch service, we're plumbing to a two inch line. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna fill the bottom tank, and then, uh, since the top tank's almost full, and then uh, we're gonna start making brine. And the cool thing about the manifold systems is we can really manipulate them to do anything. Right now we're actually filling through the suction line um, on our front second pump. So that's just gonna be feeding directly into the bottom tank. Um, doesn't take a terrible long time or a terribly long time to fill. All right guys, so we are plumb full of water. Now we're gonna turn our agitation systems on for both of our pumps and uh, make sure that we are only drawing from our brine maker itself. We're not tied into any of the storage tanks. So we're gonna flip the switch here and uh, get both these pumps running. I'll bring the camera over for the so one thing really cool is with this digital salinity uh, readout basically it's just a refractometer with a with an LCD display on it we can actually see in real time what our salt brine is at so obviously we started with all water in the bottom tank um, we're recirculating through the salt up top, overflowing back down, and you can see how quickly that salinity level is actually climbing. You remember the magic number is 23.3%, so we're about halfway there. We'll monitor that as soon as we get there. We shut it down and, and uh, pump out to our other tanks. We're going to see some variations in it, um, you know, as we're incorporating the salt brine into the, the fresh water in the bottom tank. We will see this number jump around a little bit, but after it runs through the tank about one time, it's going to stabilize um, and get a very accurate reading for us. And even right now, it's not moving around that much, maybe 0.4% um, at a time, so... And this system, like all of our dual pump models, has obviously two agitation lines or two agitation systems. We run four jets on each side of the system itself. Um, really helps focus that that pressure on the salt brine or on the salt. Um, Do you want to get a shot of up inside of it? Yeah. And on this system, you'll notice that only one pump is actually tied into our storage tanks um, and our additive induction. If we wanted to tie them both together, we definitely could. Um, but for this, this system, they, one pump works completely fine. I mean, we're pumping out at about 130 to 150 gallons per minute, depends on the level of the tank. We're pumping out at about that same 130 to the trucks. Uh, situations where we need more flow or are filling larger tanks, we will definitely tie them both together. But here at our facility, um, one pump works just fine. So it looks like we're at 18.3% right now. I mean, these systems are incredibly capable. We make salt brine very quickly. 
really the only limiting factor here is uh, how quickly can you refill the machine. And you'll notice too, as you make salt brine, um, the closer you get to that 23.3%, it might start to slow down just a hair because the salt is, or the water is becoming so dense with salt that it takes a little bit more agitation to actually dissolve that salt into the water. But um, you know, with the dual pumps, we definitely don't have any any issue with it. We're pushing uh, almost 20% now. It's only been a couple minutes. And really, when it comes down to making salt brine, the faster that we can do it, the less input cost we have in it, the less time we're wasting on the entire process. Um, really, with our machines, we look to to decrease any input cost that goes into the process and keep them simple. You'll notice a lot of the uh, units on the market that might be uh, automated or you know uh, other systems are, are relatively slow or not reliable. I mean, we try to keep our systems literally as, as dummy proof as possible. Uh, anytime we introduce something, a system that can fail, that means downtime for you. And unless you want to spend $100,000 on a brine maker, um, we really feel like these units are overly capable for their price. And you can see we really don't have a lot of time. Uh, we're already at 21.5%. So we, um, we usually do kind of sit and monitor them. Uh, we don't want to necessarily drive the level over too much. Um, usually I'd rather be under. I'd rather be in the 22.9 ever before I'd be, you know, 23.9. So you'll see once we hit our 23%, we're going to shut down our, our, strict, our pump that's strictly used for agitation. I'm going to open the valve up on the other side of the other pump to uh, pump to our storage tank. So see from my manifold that um, we are tied directly into our brine, uh, our brine tanks. We actually have a safety feature where basically every valve has a backup valve so that we cannot pump brine to places where it's not supposed to go. So right now I have our brine tanks isolated. I'll open our pump out valve. We're at about 22.6%, so we don't have much more than 30 seconds left here. And basically all we're going to do now is we're going to batch out that bottom tank. Um, we'll let it run just a hair more. And uh, now we're going to shut down that other pump. We're going to close the agitation. We're going to open our pump out line. And now what we're doing is we are drawing out of our bottom tank and we are pumping into our storage tanks. And you can actually see the liquid moving in there. And if you check out the salinimeter, we're right at 23.3%. That's what we want to see. We might, you're going to notice that it, once we get to that level, it might creep up just a little bit. This is continuously monitoring what's going out of the system, which is also cool because we can continuously tell what is leaving the system. So if they're, when we're filling a truck and there's any, ever anything that might be wrong, um, it's a good time to catch it before, before uh, we actually go out with the trucks. Now that's pretty uncommon. The salt is not going to settle out in the tanks or anything. So if we go in at 23%, we should be coming out at 23%. All right guys, so we're getting down to our last 100 gallons here. Um, as soon as that pump starts cavitating, it means the bottom tank is, is uh, empty. We are then going to go 
turn the pump off, close our pump out valve, and uh, we'll be ready to refill and start the process over. So there you go, we just batched out 500 gallons of brine. Um, we'll now we're going to uh, demonstrate how easy it is to fill the truck for you guys. All right guys, so we got the truck backed in here. Um, one of the first things that we're gonna do, I always kinda like to wear gloves when I do this. Salt brine or calcium chloride is not gonna hurt your hands, but it will dry it out, so it's kinda nice to, to avoid some of those problems. Now, depending on how you have your hoses ran on your truck, um, you might need to disconnect them, you might not to. On this one, we like to go right over the tailgate, so I will have to take the hoses off nicely with the cam locks. Real easy, real fast. So we just kind of throw those by the wayside here. And then obviously I'll be able to open up the tailgate. Now we kind of have a unique situation here. We're not filling the truck from empty. I actually have about 150 gallons in the sprayer at the moment. So where a lot of guys mess up is when they're putting their salt brine in with their additive, they forget the fact that they need to calculate um, the percentage of how much is in the tank. If it's um, empty and you want to do a 10%, that's pretty easy. You take your total tank volume times your 0.1 to get a 10% blend. That You know that's your additive. The rest of that's going to be salt brine. So if I have about 150 gallons left in the sprayer right now, I know I'm going to need to put in 15 gallons of additive um, and then 135 gallons of brine. Since I already have a 90-10 mixture, I'm going to put another 90-10 mixture on top of the, the half of that and my entire tank is going to balance out to 90-10. So don't forget to make sure that uh, you compensate for the volume if you have any left over in your tank. Otherwise, you can see some pretty big issues with congealing and things like, things like that when you drive the the additive ratio far over what it's supposed to be. So with our system here, we have our fill hose, real simple. We're just gonna take it here. We have a va uh, valve on the end of the spray hose to help isolate. Once we get the hose hooked up to our fill line on the sprayer, we're gonna open up our fill line. On our newer ones, I also like to open up the other fill line just to give the, the liquid somewhere to go uh, so it's not all going through the bottom all the time open up the valve on the sprayer itself. Now the cool thing here is with our system and this batch, uh, this batch fill, if you see, um, it's gonna ask me for an input. And for this, I'm gonna put in, I'm actually gonna put in 135. And uh, this is a directional flow meter. So ours is actually upside down. Makes it a little bit harder to read. And then uh, you'll notice We'll explain this in a different video too, but uh, this system's ready to go. We actually have two valves to isolate this. Go over to our manifold here. We don't want to be drawing from our brine maker. That's got water in it at the moment. So we are going to isolate the brine maker from our brine tanks. So we open up our brine tanks. Um, now we're gonna be coming in from our storage tanks to the pump itself. Um, and all we have to do now is flip the switch. That's kind of cool. It tells us how many gallons are already in the sprayer. Um, so we're at about 60 gallons now, almost halfway there. 
and you'll see that this system's gonna shut itself off as soon as we hit that 135. And then we know to shut the pump off, we're gonna switch to our additive, reset it, pump that in and we'll be good to go. All right, so we just got done filling the salt brine. Now we are going to switch to our additive, um, which in this case is AMP. We're gonna go through the same steps here. And a nice double check is make sure that we do have room for it just in case we looked at the numbers wrong. So we're gonna put in our 15 gallons of that. Did I reset that? And we're gonna flip the switch on the brine maker again. And then when we're done, I like to make sure that we isolate everything so that the next person using it needs to go through the exact same steps, um, just ensures that we don't uh, cross-contaminate any of the additives. So now the cool thing about the air purge, um, we now obviously still have everything open to the sprayer. We have a little bit of room left. I just kind of looked at and took a guess of how much was left. So we probably have about 20 gallons of room left in there, but uh, once we open this, you're gonna notice that uh, we are pushing through the sprayer itself and through the hoses. And now there's a bunch of bubbles coming up in there. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna close this line to the, the sprayer itself. We're gonna shut off our, our air purge. And now it means everything in between here is clear. We can turn this valve off. And what we do, um, because there is probably about 10 PSI in this hose right now, you really don't wanna pull it apart. We just purge everything off and purge the extra pressure off of the filter. And we always do that, always do that into a bucket. Um, one nice thing is it does flush out the filter for us every time. And now we know that there is no pressure in the system so we can pull it apart safely. And now our hose is nice and light to wrap back up and uh, ready for the next time that we fill. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, stay tuned for a lot more. If you have any questions, comments, put them in the video. Otherwise, reach out through our website. Uh, remember to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, stay tuned until next time.